So in this video, we're going to look at a couple of things. First of all, we're going to look at what parasite treatments I use for my pond for a number of different kind of parasites. Uh, we're going to look at what the product is, what it's used for, and also the price, because that is pretty ridiculous at the moment. We're going to have a look at that. We're also going to look at pond temperatures. I want to get some feedback from you out there on what your pond temperatures are doing at the moment, because mine, ah, back down to about 13 degrees, was way up at 16. So we're going to have a quick chat about what, what I do about my pond temperatures and how I manage the temperatures along with the food and everything else that goes with it. And if I'm lucky, I'm going to try to dispel that myth that, <laughs> that pond keepers don't like to talk about how much they paid for their koi. You know, there's this, this unwritten rule that you don't talk about how much you co your koi cost. So we might be having a look at that a little bit later. So I think we better just crack on because it's, uh, it looks like it could rain again in the UK. Surprise, surprise. Right, so these are some of the treatments that I use in my pond for any nasties that I find in my pond. Now this, the first one we're going to look at is potassium permanganate, or sometimes they call it PP. So this is probably one of the cheaper ones that you can get. Uh, it's probably one of the strongest ones you can get as well. Uh, it's probably one of the da most dangerous to use on your pond. Uh, reason for that is that potassium permanganate removes oxygen from your pond and potentially you could overdose if you overdose on, on this you could potentially wipe out your pond easily so this is this is quite a dangerous one but it's really effective if it's used properly so once you've measured your amount you want with this it goes into a bucket you can put you put hot water on it to dissolve the crystals in there uh, stick an air stone in as well that helps to mix it up once it starts to cool off and then get it in your pond With potassium permanganate, it turn your water from the lovely clear to this, this very dark purpley color. And while it's working, the, the color stays purple. So as soon as that color in your pond changes from purple to like a brown, then it's what they call spent. It's done its job and hopefully eradicated whatever you were trying to get rid of. So I use this in my pond for nasties like uh, trichodina. Uh, it would get rid of fluke, but you'd need quite a high dose of it, I would think, uh, which you've got to be careful of. So I mainly use this for, for trichodina or trick. Now, a real important one with this is to have some of this handy when you're doing this, which is hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide solution. Now this, if you start having problems with this in your pond and it starts affecting your fish, you can put some of this in your pond and it will neutralize the potassium permanganate. I like to write on the tin exactly what I need of this because when it, if something goes wrong with this, it goes wrong really quickly and you really quickly start losing fish. So I always sit with the pond, with this next to the pond, and I'll just get a deck chair and sit there and uh, you know, be be with the pond for up to four hours, this stuff could last. You've got to make sure all your filters are nice and clean before it goes in, so it doesn't start dealing with any solids in your pond because that will shorten its life of of working before it's spent. So make sure your, your, pond's, your pond filters are nice and clean before it goes in. So yeah, so this is what I use as I need a strong dose for things like trick, but don't forget, don't forget you always use this you know, never ever put it in without having something. There is some, some other solution you can buy as well that will neutralize this, but I use the hydrogen peroxide. Right, the next parasite that I get have to get rid of every now and again is fluke. We've got gill fluke and we've got skin fluke. So these two are the gill fluke and the skin fluke. One carries its own babies. I forgot which way around it is, I think. Oh yeah, skin fluke carry the little babies, but it says an ear. And then uh, gill fluke carry the eggs. So you have to do a couple of these, these sessions with, with, with most of your fluke treatments because once you've killed the fluke, then they may have already laid the eggs or they may have even given birth. So you've got to catch the eggs to, as they hatch. So you always have to follow what it says in the instructions for redosing again, but it's usually a two dose thing. These are some of the products that I use. These are, these are quite expensive, these. For example, you know, the Fluke M and Fluke S, you know, 32 quid a pack. Differences between these are one, this, for example, this one has the flubendazole uh, and this one has the Prizi Quantel, which is two different chemicals that get rid, or should, get rid of uh, fluke in your pond. Um, this product, Fluke P, I've never tried before. Uh, I'm going to give this a whirl because I found in my pond that that didn't work. 
or it, it, it knocked them back but didn't get rid of them. So it, it didn't knock them back, but they came back and the fluke cast didn't work at all. So I don't really use these two. These are empty packets that I've had lying around that I'll just show you what I've used in my pond. They may work in your pond, I don't know, but they didn't work in mine. What I did find that was quite effective was Lernex Pro. This, this was quite effective, this was. However, I did put this in just after I'd tried with these two. So I'd already tried with Fluke S, I think it was. I tried with this one time, didn't hit it, so I hit it with this and then it worked. So whether that had knocked it back and that finished it or what, who knows. But this time I've got hold of some Fluke P. I've never done Fluke P before, but again, you know, 31 pounds. These are powders that you put in a bucket and then stick some hot water on them, dissolve them up, and then they go in your pond. spread across the surface and then it will basically turn your pond a little bit milky for a few hours uh, and then it settles itself down. Whereas this is a fluid and I've never used this before to be honest. So this is the Prisiquental, Quentin, Quentinal. Anyway, this is a different one that I'm going to try next time I get flukes. Fluke people again, look at the price man. It's just, you know, and, and it all this also depends on the size of your pond. You know, my pond, I've got a 7,000 litre pond. That most of these products will only last me two or three doses. So if you've got more than a 7,000 litre pond, then think how much of this stuff you've got to start buying then. You know, these a lot of these will cover, well, how many is this to undo? This treats 12,000 litres. So this, this bottle will only do 12,000 litres. So one bottle and you need two doses at least with these because you've got, you've got the babies and things to catch afterwards. So you're talking 62 quid if you've got a 12,000 or more pond. So flukes, fluke treatments, these, these are interesting. There's, I've watched, I've been watching a video recently and, and also tried different ways of dosing this. So at the moment, the way I'm dosing this is I'll do a full dose on day one of whichever product I choose. And then on day two, I'll do a 50% of a dose. And then on day three, I do another 50%. Uh, dose. Okay, so moving on to my last arsenal of uh, weapons that I use, uh, treatments that I, I can use for treating my pond with parasites is uh, formaldehyde, formalin and malachite green. So you can get this mixed, you can get it pre-mixed so it's all mixed for you, but I like to do it separately so the formaldehyde goes in first. This helps to prepare the fish ready for when the malachite green goes in and then the malachite green does its job. So the, the different parasites you can get with this are, are white spot, trichodina, uh, costia and chin, uh, chinodonella, chilo, chilodonella, chilodonella, yeah that's the one. So, they, so these, these mixed will, will do that. So yeah, I usually do these separately. Um, again, if you hit them with a, a, a good mix or a, a nice strong mix of this stuff, it usually does it first time around. However, things like white spot that have a second a second wind sometimes, or you find that you've scraped and, and it's not worked, or, you know, I, I've used this at the moment on white spots. Uh, I've used it for costia. Uh, I haven't used it for trichodina. I, I go to my, my potassium permanganate for, for trick. So I would use that for that. I haven't really used these because I think the dosage would have to be too, too strong. And, and I've, I've kind of, I, I have overdosed with this a number of times and it's worked. But again, I'm not condoning overdosing. You know, I would say to you, go off what it says on the back, but I have, I have gone out outside of the parameters of what it says on the back of these things and put in a little bit more of a dose, uh, basically through experience of, of dealing with these products and how I handle them. But, you know, I couldn't advise anybody on dealing with your pond because your pond will be a completely different size to mine. It'll have different litres, you'll have a different filter system. So, you know, my, my suggestion for every, anybody using these products is go for what it says on the back and through experience, you'll, you'll get it sussed. The formaldehyde and the malachite green, this will turn your pond, the malachite green and they call it malachite green but it turns your pond like of a bluey green color because of the malachite it's got in it and it's used as a stain in industries in really high doses it can affect the internals of your fish as they ingest it but you know this 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 stuff will do the trick especially if you've got white spot or costia or chinadonella they, they this will do the do the trick now if you look at the prices of this lot you know just the products that i have here lined up and we've just gone through you've got almost 170 quids worth of products that will hopefully treat and sort your parasite problems. So it's, it's, it's quite expensive, this stuff. Some people have said, well, why don't you try getting it over the counter somewhere else rather than getting your, paying your koi tax on it? Well, I don't know, you know, what are we actually using then? The, the Japanese use, 
you know, different things, salts and stuff, you know, there's different ways of dealing with them. But what I would advise actually, there's a video that the guy who, who owns the Koi Wholesale, I'll put the link to the video below. He, he did a really good video uh, a, a few weeks ago that I've been watching where he talks about his experience of going to Japan and dealing with these products as well, because he owns, he, he lives with the, with the fish, massive business dealing with fish that he's selling. And so, yeah, I, I'll, 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 post a comment you've probably seen it but if i'll post the link to it down below it's well worth a watch it, it talks about all these products and it gives you a little bit more that i can i can't give you because he's got more experience than me so yeah check out the link below and he's, his name's ricky and he he owns the koi wholesale business and two really important pieces of equipment you've got to have if you're going to start managing your own parasites first one is your microscope you've got to get one of these to be a little bit more self-sufficient take a scrape from your fish there's loads of videos on how to do that on youtube and then practice makes perfect i'll, I'll put a little link to in fact I'll, I'll put this up here of describing what you're looking for so on the channel there's, there's loads of info on on what you're looking for and and how to look for it but you've got to get one of these because you can be so much more self-sufficient as soon as you see make a potential problem in your pond you can look on here to find out what you're going to be treating for otherwise you could be chucking a treatment in for, for something that doesn't exist in there you could be chucking something in for fluke and find out it's white spot and it's the wrong thing or trick and then you're trying to treat fluke and so there's a number of things that you, you need to look on these and they, they, the, the more you use them the easier they get they get in and, and so i'll put a description in the link below of where you can get these from on amazon but yeah i would recommend definitely you've got to get one of these and the other piece of essential equipment to have if you're going to start doing your own treatments in your own ponds is a pair of electronic scales. You've got to have a set of these scales because you've got to be very accurate with what you're sticking in your pond. And it needs to be digital as well so you can go to the, to the gram of what you're having to put in your pond. I, I couldn't live without these. In fact, to be honest, the last time I did this, a battery ran out. I had to leg it down the shop and get some more batteries for it and to get, me, to get it working. So these things, invaluable. You know, this mixed with this, make sure you can do what you're trying to do in there properly. Pond temperatures, what am I doing about pond temperatures? They are rubbish at the moment. You know, unless you've a heated pond where you can pick your own temperature. Uh, this coming out of this winter, in the UK, the, the weather's just been so predictably unpredictable. Does that make sense? <laughs> that uh, you know we have sort of rain one day we have blistering sun like today it was really really hot earlier on now it's it's gone right chilly again it could rain any minute now so i'm trying to rush through this video a little bit so about two weeks ago my pond was at 16 degrees now it's down to 13.5 so not impressing the fish because koi don't like this sudden changes in temperature body temperature water temperature so I'm having to stick with what I, I would call a, a spring mix, where it's a winter and a summer mix of food that Penkoi specially does. And he, he just gives me bowls of this. Now I was hoping to have changed this by now and be working on a summer mix, which is a higher protein, you know, giving more treats away. You know, I've got, I've got bags and bags of treats. Like these worms, you know, you've got the, the worms you feed to your birds, I've got those. I've got this new product that I'm trying this year, which is a, the Absolute Orange Treat. Now this is literally just a treat stuff because there's something like 45% protein in this. Yeah, protein, 45%, 12% uh, fat. So this is this will only be given as treats. And I've not been able to put any of this in yet either because the temperatures are just way below 15 at the moment. So that's basically how I'm trying to manage mine. I don't have a heater to be able to maintain a temperature. I basically have to just watch him go. At one point I was thinking about putting the, the covers back on. <laughs> In June, you've got to be kidding me, mate. No, no, so I, I haven't done, I've left them off, but I use my net. I've got my uh, framed net that uh, I use now so that should we have any problems with the pond or if we get any visitors that want to take a look at my fish that I don't want to be looking at my fish from above. Uh, I've got something to tell them as well. So yeah, pond temperatures, comment below on what your pond temperatures are and where you are as well, because that will give us a general idea if you're over in the States or over in India or Malaysia or Australia or the Netherlands or Germany or, you know, loads of people watch this channel. Let us know what your pond temperatures are and whereabouts you are, because it's dead interesting to find out how others are doing as well. Right then, myth busting time. Let's see if we can break that myth that a lot of pond keepers don't tell you how much the fish cost when they buy them. They'll tell you how big they are, they'll tell you how nice colours they are, and they'll tell you what the age they are, and they'll tell you who, who bred them. But it's very rare that they tell you how much they cost. So, let's look at my fish. Has three fish recently. Had a Shiro, 
off Andy at Derby Coy. That cost me, which I thought was quite a reasonable price. Hmm. Then I had the two Kohakus from Penkoi. Uh, the first one I had cost, which uh, think about it though, it is a 50 centimeter fish and it's for a Dainichi. I'm telling you all those things that pond keepers usually tell you. And then the second one cost, which again, it's a Dainichi fish. So, is this actually going through? It doesn't seem like it's going through. I'm trying to tell them how much I've paid for my fish and it's not going through. Why is it not going through? Because you're not allowed. I'm not allowed to tell these people how much my fish cost. Okay, right, I'm going to do it another way then. I'm going to write, who cares, I don't have to speak it then. So, let's go back to the Shiro cost. And the Kohaku's cost. It's blueing it out. How is it doing that? I'm sorry folks, it's the unwritten rule. And I'm unable to tell you how much my fish cost on this channel. <laughs> so there you go, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, share, ding the bell for notification, and click that like, because it's the like that makes all the difference on the algorithms. Thanks very much for watching, Quip on Lifestyle.